Okay, so our first section is going to talk about how to make interactive graphics with R. Um, in your readings for today, you looked at a whole bunch of different examples. Um, hopefully you looked at some cool shiny dashboards. That's one of the methods that you can use to make interactive graphs. Um, that's not the only thing. There's actually a whole world of dashboard design and how you can make these things with JavaScript and other computer languages. Um, there's a, there are a whole bunch of books. You could take a whole course just on dashboard design. We're not going to cover any of those details. Uh, I've given you some resources um, in your readings for kind of how to apply best principles, um, best practices for um, graphic design principles and other things when you make dashboards. So refer to those if you're ever going to make a real dashboard in real life someday. Um, if not, you know about it. And so now when you look at dashboards, you can critique them and you can see what works well and what doesn't work well. So you have, you have some new tools that you can work with. So with R, there are three general ways um, that you can make interactive graphics. And the graphics become increasingly complicated um, as we kind of move up the scale of, of different types of graphics. So the first way you can make graphics interactive with R is with a package called Plotly. Um, and it's actually really, really easy. We'll show some examples um, of how to do that in a minute. You can also make dashboards that are interactive using a package called Flex Dashboard. And this is fairly easy as well. You don't really need to know anything about JavaScript. You don't need to know anything about HTML. You can do it all um, with R Markdown, which you're familiar with. And so Flex Dashboards are, are fairly easy to make and they're, they're really cool. People are impressed when they see them. So um, that's a fun thing you can use. Uh, the third way of making interactive graphics and interactive applications is with a thing called Shiny. You've seen some examples of this in your readings for today. It is incredibly complicated to make things with Shiny. Um, you can take a whole course just on Shiny. I don't think there's one here at GSU. Um, our studio has resources out there. There are lots of um, mini courses and tutorials and lessons all over the internet for how to make Shiny applications. You don't have to make any of those for this class. Don't worry about that. Um, this is mostly just to show you what can be done with R in our studio. So first with Plotly, and this is the easiest way to make interactive graphs with R. Uh, Plotly is not necessarily R. Um, it's an open source package that's on the internet. Um, you can download, um, and I think it's written in JavaScript originally, and it lets you plot or it lets you do interactive things in a browser. That's all Plotly does. Um, people, the, peop the Plotly people have written libraries that translate their Plotly stuff to R. There's also Python versions of Plotly things, so you can make graphics in Python and also translate those to, to JavaScript. Um, the nice thing about this is you don't need to know any JavaScript at all. If you're terrified of JavaScript, if you've never programmed anything in it, don't worry, you don't even have to look at JavaScript at all. You can do everything directly in R, and it is incredibly easy. There is a single, pack, or there is a single function in a package called Plotly um, this function is called ggplotly, and it will take an entire ggplot that you make and make it interactive. That's all it does. It's really kind of magical. So here's an example right here. So here's our standard gapminder plot um, that I filter down to include just 2007. And if you look here, I save it as an object called myplot, um, which we've done before. If, like, if you want to save this to your computer, you can say ggsave and then use myplot. Or if you're going to use patchwork, you can take my plot and add that to a different plot. So we're just storing that as an object. Rather than use ggsave or patchwork, if we just feed it into this ggplotly function, that's all we have to do, and it will spit out this thing, which is our scatter plot. But if you hover over these points, it will tell you what the different countries are. Um, and it will tell you what the different values are. And it's not really working very well on my computer here. Um, because of the slides. But if, if you hover over these points, if you're following along live here um, with the slides, you can actually see what these points are and it'll give you the values for them. You can zoom in on sections. Wow, that's interesting. So if we zoom in on just this section, then we can hover over these points and it'll tell us what is under each of the points, um, which is really kind of cool. If you double click, it'll zoom back out. With the legend, if you click on the different points in the legend, it'll actually turn those on and off. So if you just want to see the two points for Oceania, there it is. We can turn that off and turn Asia on, and there's the, the dots for Asia. So that's all we really have to do is feed a regular ggplot 
plot into ggplotly, and it will handle all of the translation into JavaScript and create kind of an automatic um, live interactive graph, which is super exciting. Um, right now, the tooltips are kind of not super helpful. Um, if it would show up there. OK, so that dot right there, all we know is that it's in Africa. The life expectancy is 52, and the GDP per capita is $4,811. But we still have no idea what that country is. And so you can, you can change some settings when you use ggplotly to tell it what actually shows up in that little tooltip that appears. Um, the way you do that is uh, right now, in all those tooltips, it really just shows the different aesthetics that you've, that you've mapped. That's why it showed GDP per capita and life expectancy and, and the continent when you hover over the thing. If you set some other aesthetic like text equals country, that actually doesn't appear. That's, a, that's not a normal ggplot aesthetic. But if you use ggplotly and specify um, for it to look at the text tooltip, then it will. Um, it will show that. And so that dot right there is Congo. And this dot right there is Trinidad and Tobago. And so you can, there's Zambia down there. Really wish this would line up, but my mouse is doing weird stuff here. There's Mexico, Uruguay, Bosnia. So you can get, you can see what the actual points are if you just tell it to use a different tooltip. Um, the cool thing about this is it works with pretty much any geom. Um, so this was with a scatter plot. If we had a smooth line on there, we could move the mouse along the smooth line and it would tell us the different predicted values. If you have something like a histogram or a bar chart, you can do the same thing. Um, we can, if we zoom in, wow, if we zoom in just right here, we can see like this bar right there, there are nine cars in there and that's roughly the 21 and a half gallon bucket. And if we look here, there's the 20 and a half bucket. And if we look here, there's 13 in the 19 and a half bucket. And so we can we can see what's in our in our histogram here, which is pretty cool. And we can zoom back out and you can do all sorts of neat things here. Um, and again, all I had to do was make a standard ggplot, save it as some object, and then stick that object into ggplotly and it makes the graph automatically. If you want to be able to share this a graph with somebody else, or if you want to post it on a blog or post it on the internet somewhere, you can actually save a standalone version of that plot, kind of like ggsave. Um, there's this function here that's in the HTML widgets package called save widget. And so if you give it the, the name of your object and then an HTML file, it will save that whole interactive plot as an HTML file on your computer, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Um, so that's that's kind of the basic way you use Plotly here. The really nice thing about Plotly is that it is it has incredible documentation. If you click on that link right there or just search for ggplotly, you'll find it on Google. Um, there are a ton of examples of how you can manipulate the graphs. You can change the tooltips instead of just showing the country. You can have it like have a whole paragraph of text and say like this country is blah and its life expectancy is this many years and you can have it be super interactive um, and do all sorts of really cool stuff. And so if you're playing around with Plotly, just Google stuff and look at the documentation and play around with it. And you can make really quick interactive graphs that are nice. So that's method number one for creating interactive stuff with R um, is with uh, ggplotly. The second way you can make interactive things with R, and it is also fairly simple, is you can make a dashboard that actually collects lots of different um, interactive plots and numbers and other elements that you want to include on a dashboard. Um, there's a package that our studio um, has made called Flex Dashboard that is a little bit more complicated um, because you're not just feeding one single um, plot element into a, a function and magically getting a dashboard. Um, you do have to do a little bit of layout work, but the layout work is done in R Markdown. So if you look here, this is the syntax you use to create a, a dashboard that has two graphs in it in a single column. If you look here, this is just regular Markdown. Um, the, it uses special syntax, so anytime you have a third level heading right here, these three pound signs, that means that that's going to be a specific row inside our column. So we're making one row here, and then we're making another row here, and then you can put whatever you want in that chunk. Um, if you want a static plot that's not interactive, then you can just use a ggplot function in there and plot something. If you want to show a table, you can show a table. If you want to show a single number, you can show a single number. If you want an interactive plot, you can do that too. 
You can change the layout however you want. Um, so here's here's a way of making a three chart layout with one wider column and two, or and another skinnier column with two rows in it. And so you can have different elements um, on different places in the page. And the syntax for that again is just a markdown here. This to make the columns. This is a first level heading. They happen to put lines under it. You could also just put a pound sign and have a single pound sign. And then the rows are going to be the the, th the third level heading there. And that is how you can create kind of whatever layout you want. You can also add other elements. Um, it has built in a, a super easy way of adding text boxes that are big like this. You can add little icons. Um, it has this gauge thing where you can have like a zero to 100 scale. And so you can actually kind of have this, this semicircle showing how close you are to different goals or um, different measures that you care about in this dashboard. Um, if you go to the uh, Flex Dashboard website, or just search Google for Flex Dashboards, um, you're going to find a whole bunch of different examples of, of sample dashboards. And so uh, our studio has created this one here. This is just four different um, geoms showing the same data. Um, so just geom point, this is geom point with geom smooth, geom point with geom smooth that is curvy, and then two different lines here. These are all Plotly things. All they had to do was make a simple ggplot and stick it in the ggplotly, and they put it in that corner of the dashboard. And this is just a single R Markdown file that is fairly simple. Um, and all of those things that are interactive, you can hover over each of those plots and see results. Um, they also have this example here uh, showing NBA scoring from the 2008-2009 season. You can hover over each of the, the rectangles in the heat map. They also have a table over on the side, so you can actually see the real numbers. I think you can sort by the table. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and this is just our markdown um, with a single heat map in there through ggplotly. Um, this right here is a real life dashboard that is being used right now. This is uh, the Utah State COVID-19 tracking dashboard. Utah is not the only one that has used a flex dashboard. Lots of states and lots of counties and lots of kind of cities that care about reporting their COVID um, cases and deaths and hospitalizations, lots of them are using Flex Dashboard because it's really easy to use. Um, this is just a single R Markdown file that somebody in the Utah Department of Health uh, knits every so often and posts new updates on there. And they have that's how they do their, their dashboard tracker, which is really cool. You can make your own dashboard and um, track whatever you want. The documentation for Flex Dashboard, kind of like Plotly, is really fantastic. Um, if you go to either click on that link or search for Flex Dashboard, you can see all sorts of examples and extensive documentation about how to do pretty much anything you want in Flex Dashboard. So it's, again, easy to use, fun to play with, and really cool. Um, so play with that. Um, the third way of making interactive things with R is kind of the, the most difficult, but also most powerful. This is to create a Shiny app. So Shiny is a special web application framework that was designed for R that lets you do interactive statistics and interactive stuff um, in the website. And so you can have a user feed in different numbers um, or choose different options, and then R will run in the background and show the output for whatever options they chose. And so it can show new graphics or it can show um, new simulated results. Um, you can have it generate text uh, right now. Um, this is May 2020. There's some grad student somewhere that just wrote a um, tweet generator where if you give it your Twitter account, it will go find your past 5,000 tweets and train a neural network on those tweets and then generate new text that looks like your tweet style. Um, and so you can, like, that's all within Shiny, um, which is really cool. But making these things is really hard and complicated for beginners um, or even intermediate people or even advanced people in R. Um, I have never made a standalone Shiny app. I've, I've attempted it a couple times. Like if you look in R Studio when you go to File, New Project, um, one of the options there is a new Shiny app. And so once a year or so, I click on that and then it opens up a whole bunch of like template files to work with. And then I get intimidated and close it because I, I don't know how to get started and I don't really want to take the time yet to figure out how to become like an official Shiny developer. So I don't. 
Um, but there are tons of resources out there if you want to get started. Our studio has a whole website dedicated to um, learning how to use Shiny. Um, if you look there, this they have a two and a half hour long video introducing it and getting you started and they've got all of these different parts there. So you can do that if you really want. You don't have to do that for this class. We're not really doing that. Um, but it's cool because you can make like fun and exciting things. Um, so on their on their directory, they had a whole bunch of really cool shiny apps. They have contests every year to see who can create the best, most interactive, most insightful um, shiny apps. This is one um, used in biology where you can change different experimental conditions and it'll give you different results for experiments. Um, there are lots of COVID trackers that use Shiny instead of just the simple Flex dashboard. And the nice thing about this is you can actually change settings. So with the Flex dashboard one, that was just showing what is happening in Utah right now. Because this is built in Shiny, you can click on these different buttons here and it will show you new data. So you can look at the 2019 coronavirus outbreak. You can click on the SARS outbreak from 2003 and see where that was. And you can compare them. You can look at Ebola. You can look at H1N1. And so this is all like interactive here. If you look over here, you can actually change what dates it's showing. And so when, if you slide that down, it will adjust the data that's being shown on there. That's all part of the magic of Shiny. Being able to do that with Flex Dashboard is more difficult slash impossible unless you use a special, a special type of code chunk in, in Flex Dashboard that will try to do Shiny type stuff. But building something like this, that's kind of exclusively Shiny's world. Um, another fun example is this here, um, where somebody took this massive data set of like every single Lego piece, and it, it has a list of every single Lego set and what pieces are in there and the color of the Lego pieces and the number of um, the little things sticking out of them and the designs of the faces on the minifigs. And so you can, you can filter by ethnicity and gender of the, of the Lego pieces. You can look at um, different ecologies and fashion. And so if you just use these drop down menus, it will filter down um, the, the fancy interactive graph here. You can hover over things, you can click on these things and it'll zoom in. And so that's like super cool. Um, but again, that's complicated and hard and people spend lots of time learning how to do shiny and um, you can like, this is like a lucrative uh, skill to have. It's not something I have. But even so, you can still do shiny-ish things with something like Flex Dashboard. Um, so the magic part about Shiny is that the, the apps that you make and the dashboards you make are reactive, which means if you click on something on the website, it will update on, on the dashboard somewhere. It'll change one of the plots. Um, and so you have to code up a really fancy backend for it to be reactive, and that's the whole point of Shiny. But with Flex Dashboards, if you click on this link right here, or there's a page in the Flex Dashboard documentation called Shiny, um, it shows you how you can actually use code chunks that are based on Shiny um, that then work with our markdown um, and then work with regular Flex Dashboards. So this right here is from um, a research project I'm working on right now with a couple of co-authors. And what we've done is we've built a data dashboard where we have a whole bunch of different models. We have different model uh, characteristics that we can switch here with these drop down menus. None of this is shiny. We didn't have to code any of the scary stuff in the back end. This is just one big R markdown file, but it's still reactive. If we click on this donation frequency and switch it from once a week to once a year or multiple times a week or something, these plots change and these numbers change. And then we can write about different results and we can tinker with different uh, model uh, parameters. We can do all, a whole bunch of stuff here without actually knowing how to code in Shiny, um, which is really powerful. And I, I have done this, I've done this for multiple projects. Um, this is fun to do because you can get kind of the magical power of Shiny with the simplicity of just regular R markdown and you don't need to worry about the scary coding stuff. So that's something you can play with too. Um, take a look at it and try and experiment with it and see what you can make. So those are the general, the three general ways of making interactive things in R. You have Plotly for individual plots. You have Flex Dashboard for laying out different plots in kind of a simple R markdown file. And you have Shiny that's like a full-blown web application. Um, but you can also use Shiny things inside your R markdown file for Flex Dashboard and make kind of simpler simpler versions of shiny apps just in our markdown. So play around with that and have fun.